Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verba Noun. Today we're talking to all the creator and host of the channel Philosophy Tube. Just like how Betty decided to create articulations uh, because she didn't see any other art channels when she created her channel, Ollie did the same thing with his because he didn't see any philosophy channels existing. Now, disclaimer, disclaimer, I am a huge philosophy nerd, so I was really, really pleased when I found his channel a couple years ago. So in this first part, as normal, we're gonna talk about Philosophy Tube, the channel, you know, very specifically, uh, what his experience has been with it, uh, you know, what goes into the average episode. And then in part two, we're going to actually talk more about YouTube in general and some of his observations, some of his thoughts, uh, not necessarily on philosophy tube itself, but as a person who makes stuff for other people. If that's something that you're interested in, and I'm sure it is because you're watching this, then go ahead and stick around and let's just jump right into it. Okay. All right, here we go. Boop. My name is Ollie Leonard, and I present, write, edit, star in, and generally do everything to do with the channel Philosophy Tube, which teaches people philosophy. How did Philosophy Tube get started? Well, when I first got to university, I was doing a lot of stand up comedy, and my girlfriend at the time said, Oh, hey, you should do a YouTube channel to kind of get your comedy out there. But I thought that I didn't really have enough consistent material and it also wasn't good enough to do a comedy YouTube channel and you know, have a video every week. But I still had the idea of doing a YouTube channel in the back of my mind. And then, um, you, you already know, like, our government tripled the cost of attending university. So everybody in the year below me and everybody after my year paid triple what I paid to come and learn these things. And so I thought, oh, you know, some people really don't have the opportunity to study philosophy. And then I was hunting around YouTube to see if there were any philosophy YouTube channels just for my own interest, and I noticed there was a gap. And then all these three things came together, a desire to do a YouTube channel, and, and some people don't get to do it, and the fact there isn't one already all came together. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just do one then. I'll just make it. And, and the, the sort of template I used at the time was, was PBS Today channel. If you go and watch my early videos, it's very clear I've been inspired by them. Because they, the, they were the guys I was watching. I was like, oh, these guys are really good. I'll... I'll I'll do that, but I'll do it when I want to do it. About um, and it's grown and it's changed since then. But that was the main reason, really, was that I thought some people really don't get the opportunity to come to a fabulous university like this, and especially in the UK, where philosophy isn't often it's, it's not as popular as say chemistry or biology or sciences and stuff. And um, people don't opt for it quite as much, and the departments are often uh, undersized or understaffed, and it's it's not a very mainstream option. So I thought, yeah, why not just give people who who've never studied philosophy before but who might be interested the chance to do it no matter where they are in the world and no matter how much money they have most importantly you know just just put all that out there put everything about there learned for free so that anyone can do it because it, it's a fantastic thing and I thought if I enjoy doing it then there might be people all over the world who enjoy doing it so that was why I started doing it. I uploaded my first video on the 31st of May 2013 I think okay. and I I think I shot it the week before um, and I'd been writing a couple of scripts before then, and I'd been doing some research, looking at different YouTube channels that I liked, and thought, okay, what do they do that's good for maybe about a month before that? So, so kind of springtime 2013 was when it first I thought, right, okay, I've finished my semester at university now, let's devote the summer to setting something up and see how it goes. And um, I was overwhelmed with the, the success and, and the positive response from it. I mean, at the end of day one, I had 100 subscribers. I was like, what? Some people go years and don't have this. I was like, what? There's like already 100 people that watch this and, and really, really like it. And I just thought, wow, this is, this is incredible. Um, let's, let's just keep doing it. And it's, it's developed a lot since then as well. So like the quality's certainly gone a lot better. And um, if you watch my first few videos, like the sound quality in the video quality is awful. And I had a sort of awful haircut fringe thing going on. Um, and it's it's changed since then, and I, I've my writing specifically has gotten a lot better as well, which is good. And it's still still going as well. There's still places I want to take it, and still room to go. So yeah, it's been about a year and a half so far. Has there been anything that surprised you about being on YouTube? Yeah, receiving fan mail was a big surprise, because um, I was very much about the writing, and it was all, I was very much focused on the education. And then when I started getting messages and emails from people saying, hey, it's, it's you personally about this thing that I like, that, that was quite a surprise, that was quite odd. Um, I got recognised in the street for the first time a couple of days ago, I was in Edinburgh and someone came up to me and was like, oh, you're, you're Ollie? And I was like, yeah, hi. And I have a really bad memory for faces, so I thought this was just somebody I'd met at the party and didn't remember. And I was like, oh yeah, hey man, how you doing? And he was like, yeah, I've seen you on YouTube. And I was like, oh wow, that's, that's weird. Um, so that was a big surprise. And the other thing that surprised me was, um, 
I had heard a lot about YouTube comments and, and YouTube people being sort of very nasty and very toxic and very mean, but they're actually overwhelmingly lovely. Like 99.999% of the people who comment on my videos are just really intelligent, really insightful. You know, there's, there's nobody really there on a consistent basis taking the mick or, or being mean or anything. So that, that was surprising. The, the positive response to it was really good. And people really have um, interesting, insightful things to say. Like from, from day one, I knew I wanted to build in comment replies to my videos and I was really surprised by how intelligent and insightful those were and sometimes people comment and they, and they say something and I'm like, oh wow, you're, you're totally right, uh, you, you're, you're absolutely correct in what you're saying, I'll just put that in, I don't have a reply to it, it's just, yeah, you're brilliant, man. Um, so yeah, that, that, was, that was really surprising, in a really, 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 really good way. Do you think, <clears throat> and this just kind of popped in my brain, oh, that's hot. that uh, maybe... Really? Yeah, I think, I don't know, I'll bounce this off you. Like, maybe one of the reasons you don't get such nasty comments is, like, philosophy is kind of fringe, like, in terms of what people are interested in, and so the people who would normally leave really stupid comments kind of self-select themselves out. Like, you might not end up with somebody who's going to be a dick that is searching, like, I don't know, the ethics of porn or something like that. Well, okay, maybe not that. Hmm. But, like, something like that, I mean... Yeah, I mean, people have said that to me... Before, a couple of people have said to me, your comment section's really, really nice. And I'm not sure whether it's just that my channel attracts nice people. I, lo I hope that that's not the case. I hope that it's just that I give people a place and a space to play and, and be intellectual and, and be clever and be insightful if they want to. Um, and I guess there's kind of a reward mechanism in place for, for taking part in the discussion in that you, you, know, you get your comments featured in the things and, and I'll talk to people on Twitter if they have good ideas. Um, so I, I don't know whether it's that my channel attracts people who are very, very lovely and nice or whether it's just that people control their own behaviour when they come and view it. I, I hope it's the second one. And I, and I do occasionally, um, when people say, oh, so-and-so has subscribed and I look at the other videos that they look at and they come tend to be fairly typical, very wide-ranging. It's not like I'm just getting college professors and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know I don't know why that is. They are really lovely, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's just they're all actually... Maybe everyone's nice. Bring it out. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. 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 Could you walk me through the process of creating a video from conception to creation? I've been doing, people say the research phase is the longest, and that's certainly true for me, because I've been studying philosophy for five years now. So sometimes I'll do a video on something that I studied maybe three or four years ago in high school. But um, usually I, I decide a topic based on what can I boil down into, into about six minutes. Um, if it's really, really complex, um, and there are some topics that I want to do videos on that are just too too long, really, that it'll require like a whole lecture to do. Um, but that's, that's the first stage, is, is deciding when I want to do something on it. There's plenty of material, because philosophy is very, very broad and varied. Um, and then I'll try and write up a script. And I'll usually write a first draft and think, oh, that's terrible. That's you know, really, really bad. Um, and then I'll kind of save it in the computer and sort of leave it for a couple of days. And then I'll come back to it and I'll think, oh, you know, this bit works and this bit doesn't. I'll move this around. And then, you know, how can I master the metadata? And, you know, like, get a, get a hook at the start. And then here's the twist. And then here's the conclusion. Um, and I'll sort of shape it and hammer it out. I think, oh, yeah, all right, actually, this is pretty good. Um, and I'll you know, keep it tight and keep it focused. And then um, my university gives us Wednesday afternoons off, ostensibly for sport, but that's when I do my filming. So I go into my room and I set up the lights and I, I film it, and then, then the camera breaks, and then I film it again. Um, and then I dismantle the filming equipment, and then I upload the footage to my computer, and then the footage is wrong for some reason. Um, because there's some thing in front of the camera, or there's a shadow, or it's blurry because my camera's, you know, made it about 1800. So I film it again, take it all out, put it all up, do it all again. Um, then I put it in the computer, edit it all together in Premiere Pro, um, put the clips in the right order, then put the music in, uh, then put the special effects, the overlays, and, and all the, the movie magic in, um, and the people's comments flying in and stuff. And that usually takes a couple of hours to filter through all the comments on a video and select which ones I want to do. So um, all in all, from from filming to publishing, it usually takes about a day, and I usually get it done um, about a day in advance of the deadline because I like to keep things, you know, I like to stay ahead of things, and sometimes I'll even film things way in advance. So if I have to go away, then I have some stuff ready. 
And then, then um, I have to spend some time writing the description, which is very important because you have to get your keywords right. And you know, it's also got searchability and shareability and all the stuff YouTube teaches you. That, you know, you've got to do. Um, get the links in the right order. Get the recommended readings in. There's always a section in my description of um, what sources I've used. And sometimes if I studied the topic three years ago and I didn't make very good notes, I have to you know find all the sources all over again. Um, you know, create the thumbnails to upload all of those. And um, yeah, so it's usually a usually about a solid solid couple of days work um, for a full length episode. Uh, something like The Gentleman Thinker where it's only one or two minutes, I can usually usually get that done in an afternoon because I've got a lot of um, recorded audio stuff ready to go for that and I can just make the animations and stuff to go on the top of it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's work, it's a lot of work, but I mean it's, it really is a labour of love, you know, that, and then you publish it and you have to put it through all the social media outlets and you start getting the feedback in. And it, it's really fantastic when people start engaging with it and you get those first few comments that were like, hmm, I liked what you said about this. What about this, this and this? And you're like, yes, people are learning. Yes, it worked. It's alive. You know, it's out there now. And people can come back to it whenever they want. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the process really. But definitely the research takes the longest because it's five years and counting. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any big plans for Philosophy Tube over the next year? Um, well, it tends to only operate a couple of weeks in advance, and, and sometimes big things like this come and, come and surprise me. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if I hit 10,000, some, some kind of subable or Patreon something might be in the works. Um, I just had a really fun collab with This Exists, which was really, really cool. More, collaborate, more collaborations, I think. Um, there's a... A script that I have ready, which I'm um, really keen on, which is a tribute to a YouTuber I discovered recently. That's kind of something that's a little bit of a different style. And you know, at the end of all of my episodes, I ask people to vote on which comes next. So um, if that gets voted up, I'll, I'll do that. And um, you know, ho hopefully they'll see that and like it. It'll be fun for my own interests. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, this deal with this organisation who might want to commission a series or buy some links would be good. Um, like I wrote to so many institutions and universities and was just like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You teach philosophy or you do this and you say these are your aims. I am exactly in line with those aims. And loads of people were like, no. A few people just took months and months to get back to me. Um, the University of the University of um, who are very, very famous university, you know, one of the biggest universities in, in the UK. Um, I wrote to them and said, hey, you know, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm teaching philosophy to people who might not otherwise have the chance. And they just flat up said no. They're just like, we are not interested at this time. I was like, okay, thanks very much. Um, and I actually wrote to one very big um, institution, the... Um, <laughs> and I said, hey, you know, look, and they're not a university, they're, they're just a... Um, and I, I said, hey, you know, these are the aims that you publish on your website. Um, would you consider making a, a donation to my project of this amount, which I would spend on this to increase the quality of the project? And um, in fact, no, I didn't. I just said, would you consider making a donation? And then they said, uh, sorry, we don't have the budget. And I wrote back and said, no, thank you very much for considering me. Um, didn't actually name a number in my email. Didn't actually tell you how much I wanted. But if you don't have the money, then that's cool. Um, and I've actually looked up their financial documentation and, and they do have the money to support me. They just said they didn't. So, um, yeah, I won't say who they were, but it, it is frustrating. I've been writing to a lot of people saying, you know, can you help me out? I want to make this bigger. I want to make it better. Um, in particular, you know, a new camera to have some, um, have some higher quality video and stuff would be great. Um, that would be really cool. I'm writing to a lot of people saying that and a, and a few of them have got back to me um, saying, yeah, we might, we might be able to help you doing something like that. But yeah, those are, those are kind of big plans. It's all very, it's all very fluid and uh, it has to be. You kind of have to roll with it and be flexible with it. So that was part one. Now it's worth mentioning that I interviewed Ollie almost a year ago, I think late August, uh, and now it is mid to late July. And since then a few things have happened. First of all, Ollie hit way more than 10,000 subscribers. Uh, he has done a number of collabs, I believe. He's gotten himself on a Patreon and he's making a couple hundred bucks a month, which is way more than me. Uh, not jealous, I'm just saying. Uh, but the best of all is that he graduated with his Master's of Philosophy, which I think is awesome. So, Ollie, congratulations. I hope you continue to do awesome things because the world needs you. No pressure. 
And now my question to you, dear viewer, is can you think of another example where because of something the government has or has not done, uh, the result has been the creation of stuff using the internet uh, as a tool to fill that gap? The obvious example that comes to mind is sex ed, uh, which uh, Lindsay talked about in her interview right over here if you haven't seen it. Uh, so let me know in the comments below or on Tumblr or Twitter, what are your thoughts on that? What are some examples that you can think of or are there examples you can think of? And now if you're ready for part two, go ahead and click the link below that says next or in the description there should be a link to part two or somewhere there's a link. Go to it, watch it, and then I'll see you there. Okay? All right. See you in a bit.